Okay, I wanted to help you guys with understanding the cow problem, the infamous cow problem. Now this is not something to be memorized, it's just a pattern to follow um, and taking something that you know uh, and breaking it down into smaller pieces that you can calculate with. So we have two parts to what the cow is attached to and the cow is on a leash. Okay, now here comes the sad part. I'm going to draw a cow. There's my cow. Okay. Now let's get some numbers in here. Um, let's see. This part was 20. This part was 10. This was 10. The leash or tether that the cow is on is 25. Uh, I think, yep, that's it. So what you need to be able to do is to visualize how far that cow can go. He can only stretch out as far as he can on his tether, and he can't go anywhere beyond. So basically, that is what the cow needs to do. Now what you need to try to imagine, that is a circle. The center is right here, where I believe it's the barn meets the um, where the tether is. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is to break this picture into five areas. And I'll talk to you about an option that some people have chosen. Okay, I'm going to number them off. So that's area one. I'm going to call this area two. Area 3, Area 4, and Area 5. Okay? And let's fill in some numbers to go into the blank spots. Alright, so the cow's tether, the brown, is 25. To the left, we've got, I believe it's the barn, is 20. And then that would give that radius of that sector to be 5. Okay, so that's piece of information number 1. Number two, we've got a triangle for area four, and it's an isosceles right triangle. And I can tell it's a right triangle because of the way that the buildings hit each other, and it's isosceles because the two sides um, are going to be ten. So if I have an isosceles right triangle, that means I have 45, 45, 90 triangles. So there's 45, 45. Now, where that initial 45 at the bottom from 4 meets with 3, together they're a right angle, so that forces him to be um, a 45 degree angle. In addition, we've got a straight line going from 4 to 5, and we've got a 45 degree angle, a 90 degree angle, and what else do I need to add up to equal 180? Well, another 45. Okay. Now here comes the tough part, and I'm going to do it in a different color so it stands out. <clears throat> because I have a 45, 45, 90 triangle, I can get the hypotenuse to be radical 2 times the length of a leg. So that makes this length from corner to corner 10 radical 2. Why is that important? Well, that green dashed line that goes through uh, area 4 and area 5 is the same length as the cow's leash. So I need to figure out what this distance, I'm going to do another color here, from this corner to here is going to be. And that's for area 5, its radius. So the whole length is 25. And this portion of it is less than 10 radical 2. Okay. So what I'm going to do is take each of my areas and I'm going to figure out the area of the sector. And remember how we do that. We figure out what portion of the circle that sector represents, so we use the angle, the center angle, to help us with that. And then we multiply it by the area uh, for that particular sector, so its radius times pi. So I'm just going to write out the formulas, and on the next slide we'll do some calculations. So for area 1, 
we have a 90 degree angle out of 360 and I know it's 90 because I have a straight line and one of the angles is 90 because of the barn and then I've got uh, 5 squared pi because the radius is 5 okay so again on the next page we'll deal with the actual calculations of these 2 is a semicircle so it's going to be 180 out of 360 and its radius is 25 pi. Oops. Try that again. 25 squared pi. Okay, radius is 25 squared times pi. That's the area for that. Um, area 3 is going to be 45 out of 360 and its radius is 25, so I get 25 squared pi. Now there is, um, I have had a, people ask me, can I calculate uh, the area of the sector of 2 and 3 together? And the answer is yes. So you would have um, 180 plus 45, or 235 out of 360 times 25, pi, 25 squared pi. Area 4 is a triangle. And that's going to give me one half the base times the height. So one half ten times ten. And remember, the base and the height are the two sides that of the triangle that make up the right angle. And then the last one's the hardest one. So I'm going to give myself a little bit of room because he's the longest one to write. Now the part of the sector circle he represents is 45 out of 360. But here's his radius: 25 minus 10 radical 2 squared pi. Okay, so again, memorizing these numbers, these answers, is not appropriate. Understanding how to get these areas, you can apply no matter what the numbers are that you're given. Because you're going to do this on the test and you're not going to get these exact numbers. Okay, all right, let me go to the next slide where I actually do some calculations. And I'm going to talk to you about the difference between uh, what the book had and what you're going to be giving me. So area 1 was 90 over 360 times 5 squared pi. And 90 over 60 reduces to 1 fourth. 5 squared is 25. And we get the area there is 25 fourths pi. Now the book asked took the answer all the way to decimals, but again, I'm not going to do decimals until I am completely done. Area 2 was the 180 out of 360 times 25 squared pi, which reduces to 1 half times 625. Try that again. 625 pi, which gives me 625 halves pi. Area 3 was 45 over 360 times 25 squared pi. That reduces to 1 eighth times 625 pi or 625 eighths pi. 4, the easiest one, 1 half times 10 times 10 equals 50. And 5 is the hardest one. We have 45 out of 360. And we have the quantity 25 minus 10 radical 2 squared pi. So we have to remember, well, first off, that uh, ratio is 1 reduces to 1 eighth. Now, you can expand 25 minus 10 radical 2 times 25 minus 10 radical 2 and FOIL it or matrix it but there's also a shortcut. The shortcut says take your front number use brackets here, and square it, the sign and then double the product of the two terms and then you're going to be squaring a negative which is going to give you a positive. And I'm going to run myself out of room. Don't forget pi. All right, so let's give myself again over here. 
So we're going to get 1 8 times 625 minus, let's see, we're going to get 5500 radical t, uh, radical 2, excuse me, plus 10 squared is 100, radical 2 squared is 2, so I get 200, all of that pi. So I do have some like terms. Mm, let's see, I think maybe I'll put it over here. So I have 625 and 200 is 825. So I 825 eighths and then the pi minus and then I have 500 eighths and then there's radical 2 pi. Okay. Our job now is to put that all together, all those areas, into one big sum and to try to simplify. Now, I think what I'm going to do is, um, I think I'm going to go to the next screen so that we have the whole screen to work on this. Okay. So, we're going to add up all the areas, and we had 25 fourths pi. We had 625 halves pi. We had 625 eighths pi. We had 50, a little oddball. And we had 825 eighths pi minus 500 radical 2 eighths pi. Now the reason why I've left this unreduced is because I want to put everything together in one big problem. So we're going to create common denominator which is going to be 8. So this first guy is going to get multiplied top and bottom by 2 next guy by 4. This guy, the 50, is going to get multiplied by 8. So let's see. We're going to get one big huge denominator of 8. We're going to get 50 pi plus, let's see, we get 28 and 2 is 10. 24 and 1 is 25 pi plus 625 pi. And I'm going to rearrange and put that 50 guy at the end, so temporarily we're going to hold off on him. And then we have plus 825 pi minus 50 radical 2 pi, and then last but not least, 400 with no pi. All of that over 8. So combining up the 50, the 2,500, the 625, the 825, because those are the only like terms I have, that ends up giving me a total of, believe it or not, 4,000 over 8 pi. Or we're going to do it all over 8. And then minus the 500 radical 2 pi plus 400. Now, we've got a couple of issues with this particular answer. Issue number one. All numbers, 4,500, 408, have a 4 in common. So we ultimately need to reduce this answer. Plus, we also need to add a label. So let's go ahead and do the reducing first. And remember what we're reducing by. Oops, sorry. So on both of these, we're going to divide out a factor of 4. So that gives me 1,000 pi minus 125 radical 2 pi plus 100 all over 2. Now, to finalize this answer, I would add the label of square meters because everything was given to you in meters in the beginning. Now, this would be the answer that I would expect to see on the test. 
I don't need you to multiply anything out. I don't need you to uh, combine like terms, anything like that. But I'm going to go that next step just for purposes of the book. And so basically what happens is you're going to take a thousand. No, that doesn't look like an a thousand, sorry. Times 3.14. So this is the first problem. Minus, and then you're going to multiply 125 times 1.414 times 3.14 and then plus 100 all over 2 and then when you do that let's see what do we get you're going to end up taking uh, 3,140, dividing it by 2, gives you 1,570. The 125 times the 1.414 times the 3.14, all of that divided by 2, rounding to the nearest tenth, or if you round it up to the nearest whole number, you'd be subtracting 278. And then we have 100 divided by 2 is 50. And your grand total, actually I think what we did is we kept this with decimals. I think we kept this as 177.5. And then the ultimate answer worked out to be 1,343 square meters. Okay. So again, where you're going to stop on the test would be right here, where your answer is reduced as much as possible, and there's no way to combine without having to do some substitution and calculating things out. All right, hope that helps.